If I only had $500, these are the video editing laptops that I would buy. HP 15 G9. Honestly, the HP 15 G9 is a straightforward no frills machine that gets the job done for basic daily tasks, but it really stretches the definition of a video editing laptop. In my testing, it handled web browsing and office apps just fine, and you can get through a simple 1080p timeline in Premiere Pro if you're patient. However, the moment I started adding color grades or multiple video layers, the fan noise became noticeable and performance began to stutter. The base model relies on integrated Intel graphics, which struggles with anything more than simple cuts. While you can upgrade the RAM and storage, the screen is a real letdown. The TM panel has poor viewing angles and washed out colors, which is a deal breaker for a serious color correction. For $500, it's a capable machine for students or for very light occasional editing. But if video is your main focus, you'll feel its limitations quickly. Asus VivoBook 16 The Asus VivoBook 16 was a genuine surprise, mostly because of the power you get for the price. The Ryzen 7 processor in the model I tested is an absolute workhorse that handles 4K editing timelines surprisingly well, which is almost unheard of in the budget category. I was able to scrub through clips and make edits without much lag at all. The trade-off, and it's a big one, is the lack of a dedicated graphics card. Editing is one thing, but exporting is another story entirely. A 16-minute project took nearly 2 hours to render and the fans were screaming the whole time. The 16-inch screen is great for timeline space, but the color accuracy is unprofessional great, so what you see isn't exactly what you get. The battery life is also just okay, giving me around 4 hours of mixed use, so you'll want to keep the charger handy. This is the one for you if you're a beginner who needs a solid CPU power for editing and can live with very slow export times. Between the two, I would buy the Asus VivoBook 16 because its stronger processor provides a smoother editing experience even if the export process requires patience. If I only had $1,000, these are the video editing laptops that I would buy. Apple MacBook Air M4 This machine completely redefines what you can get for around $1,000. And honestly, it's a little baffling. When I first started editing a 4K project on the M4 Air, I kept waiting for the fans to kick in, but they never did, because there aren't any. The performance from the M4 chip is seriously impressive for a thin and light machine. It handles most video editing tasks without breaking a sweat. The battery life feels like it lasts forever, easily lasting me through a full day of use. The liquid retina display is crisp, color accurate, and a genuine pleasure to work on. However, during a long, heavy render, I did feel the bottom get warm and you will see some performance throttling of sustained intensive tasks because of that failless design. Plus, you're stuck with only two USB-C ports, which means living the dongle life. It's the perfect laptop for a student or a creative on the move who values a premium build, silence, and incredible battery life for editing 1080p or moderately complex 4K footage. Acer Nitro V15 The Acer Nitro V15 is all about one thing, raw brute force performance for your dollar. The first time I fired up the timeline with lots of effects, I was impressed by how smoothly it played back, thanks to its Intel Core i7 processor and dedicated NVIDIA RTX 4050 graphics card. This is something the Air just can't compete with on raw power. However, the power comes at a cost. The fans get noticeably loud as soon as you push it, which is distracting when you're trying to edit audio. And frankly, the screen was a huge letdown for me. It's a 1080p panel that looks washed out and just doesn't have the color accuracy for serious grading work. While the port selection is generous, the whole package feels a bit chunky and at 2.7 kilograms, it's not a machine I enjoyed carrying around. This laptop is for the editor who is on a street budget and needs the absolute maximum rendering power for the money works primarily at a desk and is willing to sacrifice screen quality, acoustics, and portability to get it. Between the two, I would personally buy the MacBook Air M4 because the superior display, silent operation, and premium user experience are more valuable for my daily editing workflow than the Nitro's raw power, but unrefined power. If I only had $1,500, these are the video editing laptops that I would buy. Asus ProArt PX13 This one is a compact powerhouse that genuinely surprised me with the punch it packs for its size. When I first got my hands on it, the 3K OLED screen was what stood out. The colors are just incredible, making it a dream for color grading footage on the go. I ran Premiere Pro on it, and even with 4K clips, playback was smooth as scrubbing through the timeline felt responsive, which I credit to the dedicated RTX 4050 GPU and a hefty 32GB of frame. It's not all perfect though, under a heavy rendering load, the fans get noticeably loud and the chassis gets warm, which is the trade-off for cramming so much power into a 13-inch frame. The battery life is just okay, I could get through a few hours of editing, but I wasn't always keeping the charger nearby. The Asus dial on the trackpad is a neat trick for scrubbing timelines or adjusting brush sizes in Adobe apps, but on a small trackpad, it feels a bit cramped. For a video editor who needs a color-accurate, powerful machine that's easy to carry around, this is an excellent choice, as long as you can live with the 60Hz display and don't mind the fan noise when you push it. Dell XPS 13 9345 
the Dell XPS 13 is all about the sleek, futuristic feel, and this new Snapdragon version is no dif different. It's a beautifully built machine that feels incredibly premium. My experience was a mix of love and frustration. On one hand, the battery life is phenomenal thanks to the ARM-based processor. I could use it for light tasks all day without reaching for the charger. The OLED display is gorgeous and the build quality is top tier. However, the design choices are polarizing. The capacitive touch bar for function keys drove me nuts. Try to adjust volume without a physical key is just awkward. While the invisible haptic trackpad looks cool, it takes getting used to. For video editing, the ARM chip is the biggest hurdle. While it's efficient, I ran into some software compatibility issues, and the integrated Adreno graphics just can't compete with a dedicated GPU in the ASUS for rendering or effects-heavy projects. This laptop is perfect for someone who wants an ultra-portable stylish machine with epic battery life for productivity and media consumption, but for serious video editing, the performance and software limitations are a deal-breaker. If I had to spend my $1,500 on one, I would buy the Asus ProArt PX13 because its dedicated GPU and creator-focused features provide a tangible performance benefit for video editing that the Dell Superior battery life can overcome. Now, if I only had $2,000, these are the video editing laptops that I would buy. Dell Precision 5690 The Dell Precision 5690 is the machine I'd grab for raw, unadulterated power in a Windows environment. When I threw my most demanding 4K timelines and 3D rendering project at it, the performance was impressive, largely thanks to the NVIDIA RTX Ada Generation GPU inside. What really makes it a joy for editing, though, is the stunning 16-inch OLED screen, with 100% DCI-P3 coverage. The colors are so crisp, it almost ruins other displays for me. It's built like a tank, but you feel that sturdiness in its weight, which is a little over 4 pounds. My main gripe is that it can get a bit worn and throttle under sustained heavy loads, and the limited port selection feels like a miss for a professional workstation. Honestly, this is the perfect rig for a studio-based editor or 3D artist who needs maximum horsepower for complex rendering and color-critical work but doesn't travel with it daily. Apple MacBook Pro M4 The MacBook Pro M4, with the M4 chip, of course, is all about seamless, efficient workflow, and it genuinely surprised me. I loaded up multiple 4K streams with color grades and effects in Final Cut Pro, and scrubbing through the timeline was completely effortless. No stuttering, no lag, just smooth playback and full quality. What blew me away was the export speed. A project that would take my old rig 30 minutes was done in just over 11, which shows how incredibly optimized that M4 media engine is. It runs silently and stays cool, even when I'm multitasking with other heavy apps running in the background. While the raw rendering power might not top a maxed out precision in every single test, the battery life and sheer efficiency are in another league. This is the undisputed champion for on-the-go filmmaker or content creator who needs a reliable blazing fast machine that just works, no matter where they are. If I had to spend my $2,000, I would buy the Apple MacBook Pro M4 because its incredible efficiency and optimized software provide a smoother, real-world editing experience, even if the Dell has more raw power on paper. And now it gets interesting. If I had a limited amount of money to spend on a video editing laptop, here's what I would buy. MSI Titan 18 HX The MSI Titan 18 HX is the kind of laptop you get when you want to make absolutely no compromises on raw power. In my testing, this machine just chewed through 8K timelines and complex After Effects renders without breaking a sweat, thanks to the desktop-class Intel Core Ultra 9 processor and the beastly RTX 1590 GPU. The 18-inch 4K mini-LED screen is genuinely breathtaking. The brightness and color accuracy are so good that it honestly ruined other displays for me. The Cherry MX mechanical keyboard is another highlight, making every interaction feel tactile and precise. However, this is not a laptop you'll be carrying around. It's a 3.6kg behemoth with abysmal battery life and fans that get shockingly loud when you push it. I also found the touchpad to be surprisingly finicky for a machine this expensive. This is a desktop replacement, plain and simple, built for the creator or gamer who needs chart-topping performance and has the budget to match, without caring about portability or quiet operation. Lenovo Legion Pro 7i Gen 10 The Lenovo Legion Pro 7i Gen 10 feels like the more refined and practical powerhouse of the two. While it still packs a punch with its top-tier Intel Core Ultra 9 and RTX 50 series hardware, it presents it in a much sleeker, all-metal chassis that feels incredibly solid and looks professional enough for an office. The 16-inch OLED display is a joy to use, the colors are vibrant, and the 240Hz refresh rate makes everything feel buttery smooth. I found it to be a fantastic all-rounder, handling intense video, exports, and high frame rate gaming with impressive stability. My main gripe is the battery life, which, like the Titan, is disappointing and really keeps it tethered to a desk. Plus, the power brake itself is heavy, adding another 1.24 kg to your travel load. It's a powerful and well-built machine that doesn't scream gamer quite as loudly as the Titan. 
It's the perfect choice for someone who wants elite performance in a more understated and premium design. As long as they plan to use it as a primary workstation that mostly stays put. If I had to spend my own money, I would buy the Lenovo Legion Pro 7i for its superior balance of design, usability, and top-tier performance, without the sheer excess and portability issues of the Titan. Alright guys, thanks for watching. I hope this video helped you pick the best video editing laptops for you. If you have any questions, drop a comment below. Links to all of these products mentioned in this video will be in the description. Alright, peace out.